This is an interesting piece of test equipment. This is the Meratronic type U726 electronic voltmeter, made in Poland back when Poland was still hidden behind the Iron Curtain. This is more than just a voltmeter. They could have called it a multimeter. As you can see by the selector switch, it can measure voltages, resistance, and current. I'm not going to go all too much into how it works and what it's good for in this video. I took this apart because I wanted to make sure that everything on the inside was fine. I bought this on eBay for a very agreeable price. And as we take a closer look, as you can see, it does look a lot like the voltmeters made by Hewlett Packard back in the days. This is the back of the unit. This is a place to store a probe. The voltmeter uses this kind of a mains plug-in, not an IEC socket. This thing kind of looks like an XLR plug. Made in 1977, serial number 2626. This rather sad looking contraption is the probe for measuring AC voltages. Get this uh, kind of a DIN socket, it looks like. That plugs into the front of the unit right there. And this is the probe, U726. It's also sharing the same serial number. Maximum voltage 300 volts. That's the positive up there. Just some sort of a screw. And then this, uh, I guess, would be a connection for the ground. Uh, this, I'm pretty sure, is not complete. Uh, there must be something that screws onto this, screws into this, because, uh, I mean, you ain't going to be probing around with this fat thing in a circuit. But uh, this probe, for as horrible as it may look, this probe actually is pretty damn interesting. I unscrewed the case. This is the inside. And I'm not going to pull this apart, but as you look down, right there in the center, you might be able to make out something that looks like a little neon bulb. Well, it's not a light bulb, it's actually a tube. There is a miniature electron tube, or valve, in this probe, and that, which is quite incredible, that allows this voltmeter to measure AC frequencies up into the gigahertz range. Anyway, right now I have all the aluminum panels removed to reveal the electronics on the inside. As you can see, quite interesting, being made behind the iron curtain. It does look quite different in some places, yet it does not look nearly as strange as the electronics made in the Soviet Union. We do have quite a number of transistors in this. There are no ICs, no integrated circuits. Obviously quite a few precision resistors, that sort of thing. The interesting bit is these transistors all have what appears to be American type numbers. There is one that you can uh, see right there, 2N. Also that one down there, you might be able to make out 2N2905. However, that linear regulator transistor is an ADP670. So that sounds like a number that would have been used in Eastern Europe. So that brings up the question if those two N-type transistors were actually imported from the West. I guess we'll never know. Anyway, the reason why I'm in here is right there. These are some pretty questionable looking old electrolytic capacitors. These are certainly a yeah, sign of the times. These are filter capacitors, but I mean, look at that. A hundred microfarad, yes, a hundred microfarad, that is pathetic. 
The problem is these have a 63 volt rating, so if they would have chosen 63 volt 1000 microfarad capacitors, they probably would not have had enough space in this thing to fit those monsters. Looking into the bottom of the unit, there is another filter capacitor. This one is only a 25 volt rated type, made in 1976. This is a thousand microfarads. Was not made by Elna, instead it was made by Elwa. So there is a 1000 microfarad filter capacitor and two 100 microfarad filter capacitors. They are all supplied by rectifiers that were set up using the same type of diodes. I don't know the type number, but it must be an Eastern European part because I cannot find any info on it. But given that we have the same diodes in both setups, we should, without problems, be able to replace all the capacitors with 1000 microfarad types. And you've guessed it, that is exactly what I'm about to do. Here are the two 100 microfarad at 63 volt capacitors removed from the circuit board. Also, these are not Elna, they are Elwa. As you can see, they did not leave enough space on the circuit board to mount them, so they bend one of the leads around like that. The service manual specifies 100 microfarads at 50 volts. Maybe they just ran out of those and put in these instead. So I'd assume the specified 100 microfarads at 50 volts would have fit the circuit board properly. Now, I did not know about uh, 50 volts being sufficient at the time of ordering my replacement capacitor, so I also ordered 63 volt types. Unfortunately, the online store did not give you any dimensions for these, so unfortunately, also in my uh, replacement, I had to bend the, one of the leads around. And there we have the new 1000 microfarad capacitors in place. I also replaced some small 10 microfarad capacitors down there and down there. And that's the replacement of the original 1000 microfarad capacitor. This one, as you can clearly see, is pretty much a perfect fit. As you can see, the meter has been powered up. I just measured a couple of voltages, compared it to the results of the fluke to the right, and this electronic voltmeter, despite its age, is quite precise. I'd say it's okay. We definitely didn't break anything by replacing those capacitors. I also tried measuring resistance, but Anybody who still uses these old analog meters will probably know that measuring resistances on these is a real pain. And uh, I could not get any readings out of this that made sense. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe the ohms, the resistance range on this thing is broken. But even if it is, I'm never going to use it anyways. Here we have one of the original 10 microfarad capacitors connected to the tester. It turns out the ESR is twice as high as what would be allowable. This is the original 1000 microfarad 25 volt capacitor made in 1976 in Poland. This actually turns out to be fine. And here we have the initial problem. The very low capacity, only 100 microfarad filter capacitor. Also, this one is not too bad. Interestingly, the capacity is almost twice of what it should be. But of course, in this case, that's actually good. And there it is. After a quick cleanup, all put back together, the Meratronic Type U726 electronic multimeter, not just voltmeter. Thanks for watching.